Are we one step closer to becoming cyborgs? We're looking at the latest in augmented reality glasses, the ultimate tool for analyzing, recovering, and fixing a borked box. 4G USB modems and Linux, can they play nice together? Hmm, and whose multitask datagram IP flow is making nets glow? We'll find out all that and more this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Shannon Morse? Yes. She's Shannon Morse. She needs you. What's up? How are you doing? <laughs> What's up? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm super excited. We're going to DerbyCon. That's right. We in are. In Louisville. So I hope to see you there. That's the end of September, the beginning of October. It should be I'll awesome. Be, I'll be play, playing the part of vendor again. I will be playing the part of hacker interviewer. Darren with Kitchen. Paul. Otherwise, beer drinking con goer. Are there parties? No, this hacker con they decided that they were going to do away with all the alcohol, the parties, all that. No, it's just Wait. it's going to be very Seriously? strict regiment of no. Are you kidding? There's going to be like five people there. Yeah, yeah, this <laughs> is kidding. really exciting. It's their first one, so we'll find out. I'm super stoked for it. Me There's too. Be a, a very good vibe going into this one already. So uh, if you're in the area, definitely come by, say hi to us, say hi to us. Where's it at? It is in Louisville. Louisville, That's in Louisville, Kentucky. 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 I think I drove through there once on my yeah. way to North Carolina. We're going to get some whiskey when we go there. Okay, you can get the whiskey. I'm not getting whiskey. I'm just saying. Bad things happen There's... when I drink whiskey. Paul will be there with the camera. So look forward to that in just a few weeks. Um, Yay, bloopers! <laughs> dude, also like ridiculously good stuff uh, coming around just the corner here. So uh, very stoked about that. Uh, and last week, you guys remember we were talking about the case mod with Ben Heck. And here it is, the wonderful case mod this week. We need your help. Yeah. We need your vote. Because that, that bad boy, that full ATX for under $200 is killer. And it needs, it needs you to go over to revision3.com slash vote and say yes. Okay, I have to say, like that thing is a lot more heavier than it looks. So vote for us because that thing was killing my back when well, I was walking around San about Francisco. To, it's about to uh, get a lot heavier. I'm doubling the battery. The, uh, I'm... Doubling the, um, I'm not doing any more of that walking around San Francisco I'm, with the thing. Uh, I'll no, go downstairs Louisville. to the Starbucks. Louisville. Oh. Bring it to uh, DerbyCon. Oh, okay. I'm putting a second battery in it to double the uh, lifespan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of conventions, we actually got something in the mail. Ooh, I love when we get ago. stuff in the mail. Me too. 548 Market Street, number 39371, San okay, Francisco. Okay, so you hold California, these. Four, you hold this. 104. There you go. That's actually for you. So this is from David Hughes. And he basically sent us this uh, all sorts of stuff, a sticker, this patch, and then the t-shirt for this convention called LastCon. LastCon takes place in Austin, Texas from the Friday the 28th of October, and it is the Lone Star Application Security Conference. It's uh. also going to be the first place of... Uh, they will be hosting OWASP, which is the Open Web Application Security Project. So, Sweet. it sounds like a fun convention. And stickers. Sorry we can't go this year, but now so everybody knows about it, so I hope plenty will. Boom. There we go. It's like we, need, we need, like, the bulletin board that they have Multi at the back of the university center where you put the push pin up and you're like, party! We need that here on the show. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe a bumper or something. The latest con. But, dude, thank Bumpers. you. There you go. Uh, we have some great stuff kind of coming up in just a bit. I had the uh, great pleasure of talking to Clark Dever. You may remember oh, yeah, him yeah. from... yeah, yeah, Clark's um, awesome, man. We spoke to him he last... He was at CES? At CES, yeah. yeah. They, they were showing off some pretty wicked, uh, like, I don't want to say VR goggles, because that's so 90s, but the augmented reality glasses that they are. These new ones are pretty wicked. I actually have one on order right now. I, I had yeah. some ideas when I checked out the, the glasses, and yeah. I can't I mean, wait to see. I mean, one kind of affordable. I mean, it's kind of a crazy splurge at like 500 bucks, but... It's affordable, the widescreen though. and the... Dude, you think about what those were in the 90s? Yeah. I'm going to live my cyberpunk dreams here in just a bit. And when we get back, uh, I know that you're diving into all sorts of fun analysis and recovery tools. Yes. Oh, it's going to be deliciously amazing and fun. Cool. And then let's also not forget Dale Chase at the end of the A Block with our... Hacker Headlines Remix. We'll see you guys in just a bit. It's like that, y'all. 
Today, guys, we have the great pleasure of being joined by Clark Dever. Hey, how are you, man? Good, man. G glad to be back, Darren. Last time we uh, saw each other was at CES. CES, yeah. We checked out some of your wicked new products, including one behind closed doors, a prototype you guys called the Raptor, a see-through. Now you get some see-through stuff. Is this the Raptor? This isn't the Raptor. Uh, this is the Star 1200. It's a little bit different technology than the Raptor. It uh, uses just a LCD display and then a beam splitter. And so you get 50% of the light you know, transmits back into your eye, but you can still see your environment and maintain your situational awareness. Whereas the Raptor used uh, waveguide technology. And the benefit of the waveguide, and it's still under development, is it moves the display engines to the side, which gives you uh, a lower profile on the glasses. Right, because when you look at these from the outside, you may not realize, you know, and if we flip these around here, you'll see that these boxes are actually where, you know, the video signal is, right? Yep. And yep. then that's being projected down from above this, this area right here, and there's kind of like a tilted, is it tilted glass? Yeah. What is it in there? Yeah, it's, a, it's called a beam splitter, and it's a, it's a glass that transmits some of the light through and, and reflects some of the other light. Okay, but this essentially provides you the same thing. You put these on, you see right through them. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Like, you don't really see a whole bunch of stuff in your field of vision. So, th so I mean, this is, this is targeted at, uh, like, an industrial audience or a research audience, very, like, think tank oriented. Um, you know, it's, it's a stepping stone product because when the waveguide technology yeah. comes through, then, then it's like wearing a pair of Oakleys. Dude, that's what everybody wants. Are you kidding? I, sh I want that in my motorcycle helmet. You know, I want to have like my tachometer and my speedometer and like GPS signals telling me where to get off and, you know, thing telling me how, fa how far behind the cops are. I don't know, something. <laughs> you know, like. That's definitely uh, the goal. Is is just the incredible amount of augmented reality applications that you can you can bring. Well, you've actually got kind of a demo application here, uh, which started on, uh, which is kind of fun because we are now filming Paul filming us, but it's in predator vision. And maybe if we can get Jason, Jason, to come over here. Jason, uh, come over. You got a great shirt for this demo. <laughs> uh, he, he looks like a turtle. <laughs> I like my plaid. <laughs> So great. Anyway, so uh, so single webcam on here. So the idea of still doing augmented reality with that, as opposed to what was it the the not the Rap twelve hundred, but the Rap twelve hundred AR yeah. one they have the SDK for. Yeah. Same kind of idea here, except you don't have to feedback what you're seeing. Yeah, because uh, it allows you to see through the the display. You don't need two cameras because we can just mathematically figure out where we need to display for each eye for it to align. Um, but with a video pass-through device, which is what the uh, RAP 1200 AR is, you, you need two cameras so that you maintain your sense of depth reception. Yeah, but it's not even just that. Like, you've got the two cameras, but you also have to, you've got like a field of view like this. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's no good, you know. Then you're, then you're driving like a Californian where this is your <laughs> field of view, you know. Well, I like to, you know, I, I think that there's applications for see-through and video pass-through AR because video pass-through AR is really immersive. And so when you see an object in 3D space, it's, compi you know, it's combined with the video feed, so it feels uh, natural and it's really opaque. Yeah. And with the see-through, it's a slightly different application. It's, it's more, you know, uh, what I like to think of is augmented reality in the sense that you're taking data and, and you're giving yourself new abilities um, based on this presentation of data in your field of view. Yeah, like ability to remember <laughs> people's names and how to pronounce them. Like I could put a box over your head and have it like, you know, hit Facebook's facial recognition software and be like, oh, that's Clark, exactly. you know, and this is how you pronounce his last name. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is pretty wicked. So where do people get in on this? Because that, so you say it's for research? I'm, I'm in yeah, well, I mean, it's available online. It's the first uh, see-through AR production model, you that's know, exciting. of, of first-person view. So uh, Vuzix.com slash AR, uh, mm -hmm. and you can go and you can just order it from the site and it'll get shipped right to you. Nice. And those are pricey, though, right? Yeah, they're about five thousand dollars okay. right now. Okay, <laughs> let's let's scale it down just a bit. This this is I, we saw a prototype of this as well at CES. This is finally out. This yes. is the one I've been waiting for, uh, the Wrap twelve hundred. And uh, so, tell me about this guy. So, the nice thing about the Wrap uh, twelve hundred is it's a lot more adjustable than our previous models. It has a tilt adjustment mm -hmm. depending on your uh, the way you're looking at it, and it also has these adjustments that allow you to change the position of the display because everyone has a different distance between their eyes. So this allows you to really tune it in and, you know, so you have great 3D. You don't get any of that double vision or anything like that. So they support 3D, they support 2D video, they plug into an iPhone, 
uh, or, you or your computer. Same, you get the same Vuzix, the, the, the universal Vuzix connector. The, yes. So this right here you've got with VGA, but you also have what, uh, iPod docks and stuff like that? Yeah, 30 pin, uh, you can do composite video. I mean, really, if it's a video source, we can plug into it and you can get it in your And glasses. what's the res like on that? Um, I think it's, it's a 16 by nine version of SVGA. Okay. So it's SVGA plus. Gotcha. Uh, and it comes with a, or the VR version, the RAP 1200 VR comes with a, a six degree of freedom head tracker. Mm -hmm. So you can play games. And, and you know what, this, this has the USB port for it too, right? Yeah. So you just, so what does that allow you to do? <clears throat> The yes. head tracker. So, so the head tracker, I mean, it, it really allows you to do uh, whatever you can come together. We have an SDK for the, uh, the product, so you can brainstorm something. You could have it remotely control a, uh, a camera feed, okay. or you could plug it in. Traditionally, we have support for a bunch of different 3D game But it, it tracks your head movement is yeah. the idea. How Pitch, does it, yaw, roll. How does it do that? Does it have, like, accelerometers yeah. or what? There's uh, there's a bunch of different sensors in there that give you give you a bearing. You, know, you don't need to the like wear the field of the earth. And so you don't need to wear the funny hat and put something on top of your monitor. No, as a, as a reference point. You you set it up when you first sit down at uh, wherever you're going to use it. You calibrate it so it gets rid of any kind of drift that happens, and then oh cool, like calibrating the touch screen on your old PDA. You have to like look up and to the right, and, like all these different places. Like, exactly. Nice. Yeah, I mean just straight ahead. You press one button, you're locked in, and then you can go. You know. Play a first-person shooter, and that's what I control. want them for. Honestly, I've been looking at those things since like 2000 something, and um, and yeah, it seems like that's finally. So these are at a much more palatable price point too. Yeah, these are about five hundred dollars on the web right now. See, now we're talking, we're getting into <laughs> hacker territory mm -hmm. where uh, I would like to start hacking with those. What kind of crazy hacks have you seen? And I mean, in, in addition to your your, your predator demo. <laughs> yeah. So so with the video I wear, especially with the head tracking, there's a couple different. Um, spaces that I've seen. I've seen it in the real world. People uh, put a camera on a uh, remote controlled helicopter or plane and they fly their plane in first person like view mode. Like a quadrocopter with a camera on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually another hack that, or another uh, a project. Anyway, yeah. A AR drone. There, yeah, there yeah. you go. Or, uh, well anyway, I'll tell you about it later. Okay. But, uh, there's this really cool uh, vertical takeoff and landing um, yeah, it's like it's so totally sick. Anyway, and then there's some really clever um, connect hacks that we've seen where people are, you know, they put on the glasses so they're mm -hmm. in first person view mode. And not only that, I mean, instantly cool points. <laughs> I, I, I am zero cool right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm hacking a Gibson <laughs> while I'm doing Gibsons are being hacked live, people. It's all about the heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, right, put a connect in front of me. Okay. The connect, you know, so now I can see your skeleton. Sees my skeleton. And uh, we plug that into the computer and we can render uh, a 3D space and I can be a character in that. And so I can put my hand in front of my eyes and I have head tracking and I will see myself as, an as my avatar. Whoa. So, so you could be in World of Warcraft, of course, as a female character. Yes. Like, of course, as a furry. It's and, furry. Uh, and then there you go. <laughs> Actually, it only works with furries. It only works with furries, folks. So you have to pick Important the right model. features, yeah. All right, that's wicked, dude. And and you were even showing like a, somebody set up, took it to the extreme, taking uh, that as well as a Wiimote in a gun yeah. to like put together first person shooter. That that's you've got it all. Then you've got like the swinging of your gun, the moving of your head with the head tracker, the video coming back from, and then moving your arms and limbs with the connect. It's like. Wow, holodeck, it's happening. Yeah, it is, it, and I was joking, it's, it's the lawnmower man. You know, we've had to wait an extra 10 years or so, but. Uh, yeah, we've no, we're getting that. there, and dude, just being able to see through those, that opens up so many applications. I'm sure so many people watching right now have those brilliant ideas. If they have those brilliant ideas and they want to start hacking at your code, do you have like open SDKs and stuff? Yeah, we definitely do. We have an SDK that supports uh, both the displays and the head tracker, and we have code demos for, for all different types of uses. Can we, can we get at some of this code right here? Uh, sure. I'm actually going to release uh, the demo that's running with the Predator Vision, and then sure. I have a bounding box version of the demo that looks at uh, the brightest pixels in the scene and draws a little square around them. Uh, I'm going to put those both on the Hack 5 Dude, website. Dude, that's really useful. Once you get the square around the object, it's like, all right, you know, fires the missiles. <laughs> Dude, sweet. It's so great to catch up with you. It's so cool to see the new products. I'm, I'm glad that we got to play with them. I know I'm going to be getting one of these immediately. Thanks so much. Uh, for more information, head over to Vuzix.com. We've got more great technologists, probably including bunnies, coming up. But first, we're going to take a quick break. Now, it needs to be something more like straightforward, like USBRubberDucky.com. No, no, it should be more hardcore, like 
like tacticalassaultducks.com. I'm leaning towards programmablehumaninterfaceadvice.com. No, no way. Absolutely not. Is that you typing? Kirby! Kirby! Meow! No matter what your project is, Domain.com has what you need to register, host, and promote your next big idea. Even if it's fgugahud.com. Domain.com is owning the competition with cheap domain names and hassle-free service. Their easy checkout process and domain discovery system make it easy to select a domain that's right for you and set up your website without hassle. Domain.com will even transfer your domain name from another registrar and hook you up with an extra year for free for a mere well, it's actually less than $6.50 when you use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout. That's right. Our coupon code HAK5 will save you 15%. Don't forget, when you think domain names, think domain.com. Fox IT investigates Digi Notar breach, adds more sites to the hackers, attack breach, the CIA, Mossad, and MI6, among the more than 500 bad certificates. The PHP Development Group plans a version control repository move from SVN to Git, a move that a majority of PHP devs can get with. Several domains with registrar, net names, Sunday had their names redirected. UPS, Acer, and Nat Geo among the affected, hacked using SQL injection. Malcon, the infosec con for malware, calls out for reports or techniques out there to educate your system defender. The 26th and 25th going down this November, yeah. One time for your mind, I'm Del Chase, those are your hacker headlines. Lead a one-stop tool to fix your PC. Shannon shows off the high rend boot CD. <laughs> Uno más, por favor.